Continuing residual income refers to the residual income after the forecast horizon. So in most competitive environment, we'll always or we tend to assume that the residual income would approach zero or in other words, the return on equity will revert to the cost of equity over time. So if you look at this timeline, for example, let's say our forecast horizon is four years. Okay, so we have the current book value per share and then we have the residual income for year one and then we'll forecast all the way up to year four. Okay, so this is our forecast uh, period. Okay, four years and this is, a, this is the uh, end of it. So the thing is, uh, what are we going to assume for the residual income after year four? So we have year five and of course year six. Now, if you assume that the return on equity will revert to the cost of equity, that means your residual income should be uh, fading over time. Okay, so there's this keyword called fading or it will decline in other words. So we will apply a, a factor okay, with the effect of fading or decaying. We call it a persistence factor uh, or in this case, omega. So we'll multiply omega to the residual income in year four. And then the same thing for year six, we'll multiply by the uh, by the uh, factor again so we have uh, ri4 multiplied by omega square so that means each year the residual income will become smaller and smaller because uh, the factor omega here is between 0 to 1 inclusive now of course if you want to value the company we will want to be able to then summarize or to present value all this residual income so let's say now I would like to calculate the total present value for the residual income from year 4 onwards, okay, up until infinity. So what I'll do is uh, I will discount all this, okay, back to period 3. So in this case, uh, the terminal value that we'll compute at period 3 will be equal to the residual income in period 4 and then we'll discount it back by 1 year for the first uh, for residual income in year 4 and then for residual income in year 5 we'll take the residual income okay and then we discount it by r for two years that means uh, back to year 3 and then for the residual income in year 6 we'll discount it back to year 3 so that's why the power here is 3 now uh, I'll factorize the residual income in year 4 over 1 plus r to the power 1 uh, from all these terms so here we have a geometric progression series okay which will then simplify to this so the terminal value at the point of year 3 will be equals to the residual income in year 4 okay divide by 1 plus r minus the persistence factor okay so this omega here is what we call the persistence factor now, of course, uh, by doing this, so once we've calculated a terminal value, what happens is that it summarizes all the residual income from year 4 onwards into just one number that we can then use to calculate the intrinsic value of the stock. So what we need to do now is just take the book value and then uh, compute the present value of the residual income for RI1, RI2, and RI3, and not forgetting the terminal value, which is in period 3. Now, let's look at uh, the individual case. So let's say when the persistence factor is equal to zero. In other words, the residual income will become zero after the forecast horizon, which is uh, from year four uh, after. So remember, initially we have RI4 times omega. So now omega is equal to zero. So the residual income is zero, okay, zero all the way. So in this case, uh, we only have effectively, there's only four residual incomes to discount. So when you calculate uh, this, uh, if you use a formula, so the terminal value in period three is basically just the residual income in year four discounted back to the previous period. So it's just RI sub four divided by one plus R. So it will just move it back to one step, okay, to the front. So effectively, that would be our terminal value in period three. Okay, so we just have to calculate the present value of all the residual income and the terminal value and then you discount them back and add it to the book value per share that will give you your uh, intrinsic value per share. So let's take one example. Let's say I have my cost of equity is 12%. My book value per share for the company is $20 and the residual income has been forecasted uh, for year one is $2, year two is $220, for year three is $235 and for year 4 is 250 
and right after that uh, we assume a persistence factor of zero so the residual income will be zero right after that okay so four years this is my for the my forecast horizon so if I want to find the intrinsic value of this uh, company of course uh, if I write a formula out there will be 20 then we'll plus 2 over 1.12 to the power 1 and 220 over 1.12 to the power of 2 plus uh, 235 plus uh, 235 over 1.12 to the power of 3 plus 250 over 1.12 to the power of 4 okay so that will be able to give us the answer now of course if you if you are actually uh, using this formula okay if you are using this formula what happens is that when you calculate the terminal value in year 3 you will take the residual income in the forecast horizon ri4 divide by 1 plus r so that will be uh, 250 over 1.12 to the power 1 okay so effectively you are you are basically just moving this number back to the previous period okay so even if I do it, even if you don't apply it, you can still get the same uh, answer. Okay, but if you want to do this, so 250 uh, divided by 1.12, so that will be 2.232. Uh, so in this fact, uh, another alternative way to write it is to take 20 plus 2 over 1.12 to the power 1 uh, plus 220 over 1.12 to the power of 2 and then plus uh, 235 okay and then plus the terminal value 2.232 over 1.12 to the power of 3 okay you can also uh, do it this way now let's compute the number now so in the calculator so we just press uh, the cash flow worksheet make sure you clear your inputs so your CFO is 20 for the book value and then CO1 is uh, $2 Okay, and then CO2 will be 220 and CO3 will be 235 and uh, CO4 will be uh, 250. Okay, this is assuming that I'm following the first method here. So my end, my so let's check, make sure everything is correct 235, 220, $2 and 20 here. Okay, your press uh, NPV and your I is equal to 12. Enter and then compute. Okay, so your intrinsic value is 2680. Okay, so that's uh, $26.80. Okay, so that's the intrinsic value for this uh, scenario. Now, let's go to the next scenario. What happens if omega is equals to 1? In other words, the residual income will remain a constant uh, level indefinitely after the forecast horizon. So that means year 5, year 6 and onwards will take on the value of the residual income in period 4. So if you see here, this is nothing but a perpetuity. So if I were to substitute omega equals to 1, then uh, 1 plus r minus 1 would just be equals to r. So in other words, if I treat this as a, a perpetuity and I discount it, so this will be ri4 over r, okay? So that would then transform this uh, whole st uh, stream of cash flows of residual income into a terminal value and then you'll be able to calculate the intrinsic value of the uh, residual income uh, of this company so let's look at this example uh, again uh, we'll we'll start by assuming the omega is equals to 1 so you will see that right after the forecast horizon the residual income is 250 okay uh, and this goes on forever so if I apply the formula so the TV uh, or the terminal value in period 3 will be uh, the residual income in year 4 over 1 plus r minus omega so that is uh, 250 in year 4 over 1 plus uh, 0 0.12 minus 1 so that's a uh, 250 250 over 0 0.12 okay so that's a uh, 20 dollars and uh, 0 0.0833 okay and then uh, you will take uh, so the value here okay uh, so in other words uh, you are converting all these numbers all these numbers to period 3 so that's uh, $20 uh, in 83 cents you can then use the financial calculator so uh, from the financial calculator okay we press cash flow worksheet and then uh, we enter the numbers so since we entered it earlier so we'll just reuse the numbers so the CFO is uh, 20 for the book value uh, CO1 is 2 CO, uh, then CO2 is 220 and then uh, for the third period okay this is 2.35 but we have to add in the 
terminal value here. So we'll take 2.35 plus 20.833. So that will be equals to 23.183 and press enter. Uh, make sure to uh, set CO4 equals to zero because we did this in the previous example. So once you've done that, press MPV, scroll down and press compute. And you can see the value is now higher, it's $40.04, okay? So that's the intrinsic value uh, if the residual income persists at $250 forever. Now, if you are setting the persistence factor to be a number between 0 and 1, that means we are assuming the residual income will fade at a factor of omega until the ROE approaches the cost of equity, which means that in the long run, the residual income will approach zero. So in this case, we'll apply the persistence factor, okay, uh, based on the residual income in the at the end of the forecast horizon, which is RI sub four, and then we'll apply that consistently until the end. So the terminal value at uh, in year three, okay, will be equals to the residual income in year four over one plus R minus the persistence factor. So again, that will summarize the stream of residual incomes into this terminal value in period 3 and then we can discount all this uh, residual income and terminal value to present time and then add it to your book value to find the intrinsic value. So let's now assume that the persistence factor we're going to use is 0 0.6 and uh, after year 4 which is the forecast the end of the forecast horizon so in year 5 the residual income will be 60% of uh, the year 4's residual income and then the residual income in year 6 is another 60% of the residual income in year 5. So this is the, how the numbers will fade over time. So if you want to find the intrinsic value, we'll apply the formula. So the terminal value in period 3 will be the residual income in period 4 over 1 plus r minus the omega or the persistence factor. So this is 250 over 1 plus uh, 0 0.12 minus 0 0.6. All right, so this will give us four dollars and four point eight zero seven seven okay so all these numbers okay from year four onwards okay will be summarized into one number which is four point eight zero seven seven okay so this number will appear in period three so now what we have to do is just to discount all these values and add it to the book value so using the cash flow worksheet again, let's uh, clear the worksheet. So uh, CFO is 20 and CO1 is $2 and CO2 is $220. CO3 is uh, 2.35 plus 4.8077. Enter. So of course uh, that will sum up uh, the number. Of course, if you want to be sure, you can sum it up before you press enter. Okay, so just to check, uh, 2.35 plus uh, 4.8077. Okay, so that's uh, 7.15, uh, 7.1577. So we're done. Uh, going over the NPV, I is equals to 12. Enter. Uh, scroll down and press compute. So the intrinsic value here will be 28.63. Now in the last scenario, uh, we are not going to use the persistence factor anymore. So sometimes in the exam, they may tell you that at the end of the forecast horizon, uh, they will give you the expected price or the expected book value, or they may give you the price to book ratio. So in this case, we will assume that uh, you are given the price to book ratio at the end of the period. And by using that, we will be able to find the PV of all future residual income. So let's assume that uh, you have uh, the price, okay, as well as the book value at the end of year four. You have these two numbers. So what we want to do is uh, to capture the, uh, the present value of all future residual income from year five onwards. So one quick way is to take the difference between the price, expected price at the end of year four minus the book value at the end of year four. So that will give us the present value of the residual income in year five and onwards. Now, of course, how do we get to this? So if you link back to uh, the residual income model where V0 is equal to B0 plus the residual income in year one over one plus R to the power one 
plus residual income in year 2 over 1 plus r to the power of 2 and it goes on forever. Now, uh, what this formula implies to us is that if, if I were to take V0 minus B0, the difference between the intrinsic value and the book value would represent the PV of my future residual income. This one, and this is Ri2 over 1 plus R of 2 and so on. So if you see that the timing here is 0, which means today, but uh, the residual income is from period 1. Okay, so in this case, if I'm using 4, then the residual income has to start from 5 here. Okay, so that's pretty convenient. So I'll, what I can do is I'll just calculate P4 minus B4. Okay, in fact, actually it's uh, already here. So so the P4, P sub 4 minus B sub 4 would capture okay the present value of all the residual income from year 5 onwards. So using this, I will just calculate the the uh, intrinsic value by taking the book value plus the PV of the residual income from year 1, 2, 3, okay, and then in year 4, you will have to take the residual income in year 4 plus the premium, what we call the premium over the book value. Now, let's see an, an example to illustrate that. So, let's say uh, we have the same residual income from year 1 to year 4, and then let's say the residual income from year 5, 6, 7 onwards, we leave it as an unknown. Okay, and this time we are given the information that in year 4, the book value per share is 42.17. Okay, and then uh, the price to book ratio uh, in year 4, the price to book ratio is 1.3. Uh, so based on this, uh, how do we calculate the intrinsic value okay, of this share? So what we'll do is I'll, I want to calculate P4, P4 minus B4. So to find, uh, I have B4 now, but I do not have P sub 4. So to find P sub 4, that will be 1.3 times the book value at the end of year 4, which is uh, 130 times 42.17. So the expected price will be equals to 54, okay, 0.821. Uh, and uh, the premium, if we calculate P4 minus B4, so that would be 54.821 minus 42.17. So that will be equals to a premium of $12.651 over the book value. And uh, this number would capture the PV okay, of the residual income from year 5 and uh, onwards. Okay? So that's what it captures. Now, having known this, we'll just uh, insert this in. So the difference of the premium here is $12.651. We can now calculate the intrinsic value. So again, we press the cash flow worksheet and then uh, the B0 is 20, uh, C01 is $2, C02 is 2.2, .2, C03 is 7. Uh, it's not 7.1577, it's 2.35. Okay, enter. And then C04 will be 250. And then we need to add it to uh, the premium, 12.651. That's equal to 15.151. Enter. And then make sure there's no cash flow after that. Then uh, in NPV, I is equal to 12, and then compute, we get 34.84. Okay, so that's your intrinsic value. So that's pretty much all the scenarios uh, that will be covered uh, for continuing residual income uh, for this uh, particular reading.